The pulpit has been misrepresented by the leaders and pastors all around the world. And I'm not just singling out no one particular pastor. But I also understand the type of calling that's on this ministry. It's a reason why God allowed me to experience encounters way back in 20, 2003. It's a reason why, Antoinette, that God exposed me, my God, to discipleship because God was then laying the foundation for now. Because he knew that the church is intoxicated off a of hype. The church as a whole has got away from biblical principles. The church, my God, has got away from a strong foundation. That's why when we go through stuff, we can't take nothing. That's why when we outside of the four walls, my God, when the phone rang at one, my God, our temptation, our trials come, my God, to test us, my God, we are failing test because our foundation is not secure. We are leaking vessels. That's why I thank God for discipleship because discipleship begin to plug the holes that's leaking out the anointing. That's leaking out the power. The book of Haggai said, what you brought home, I blew away. They couldn't understand why they wasn't prospering, my God. He said, because your pockets have holes in them. Don't just imagine your physical clothes. Your temple have holes in it. Your temple have cracks in it and it cannot handle the full Shekinah glory. And so we experience God, my God, inside of the church. But then we don't experience God outside of the church. God wants you and I to have encounters. I'm not settled in, but please grab a, the thing for me, daughter. God wants you and I to have encounters, not just once a year. But when you are truly walking and in God's presence, you should have encounters all the time. It shouldn't just be happening in September, my God. When you're spending time with God, my God. When you're opening up that Bible and flipping those pages, my God. My God, you should get to the point where you have a vibrant relationship with God. Where God is constantly speaking to you. I love the theme. I thank God that God blessed Kendall with the theme of recharge. Because we all need to be recharged. Because life tends to get on top of you and I. Life tends to get hard. Sometimes we get out of the will of God. Sometimes we begin to make decisions, and my God, that's not healthy for us, and it begins to cause us to get weary in well-doing. But thank God that there is a platform that's still available, my God, for you to come. When I look at these crosses, look at all of the information. Them crosses, and this was three of them, but that's two of them. Uh, that's pain. That's also deliverance. That's anger. That's frustration. That's my baby's daddy. That's my ex-husband. That's, that's that mama that I have a hard time forgiving. That's that daddy that molested me. That's my uncle, my God, that touched me. Come on, somebody. That's that drug addiction. That's that opiate addiction. That's that porn and sexual sin on the altar. So I was asked at the last encounter back at 34-34 by a pastor that came by way of Oklahoma City. He said, why come you don't open this up and make this like manpower and so forth? Because it has the potential foundation, my God, to become that big. I said, I don't want that. I want the intimacy. I want the intimacy. Encounters is about you and God. It's not about the people. So if you make them too big, you lose, you lose the impartation of the one-on-one -on -one intimacy with God. Because then we tend to get distracted about who's her, what they were, what they doing, what, 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 what name, what person is her that got the great name, and we lose focus. The encounters is about us coming face to face with our stuff. Ladies, You know what this means to you. Encounters is foundational stuff. Going home for Christ works on the internal, not the external. 
That's why it's uncomfortable sitting, my God, in a ministry like this, my God, because it focuses on your internal healthiness more than your external look. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within. I'm reminded of the woman of God, Pastor Teresa, when she said it's a whole lot of stuff on top of our eternal yes. It has been a very difficult work because God has blessed me and my wife with people that got a whole lot of pain. Their traditional church won't touch. Jumping and shouting won't heal. Worrying back and preaching won't fix. You have to have a platform, ladies and gentlemen, to deal with your stuff. That's what the encounters is about. Anytime this church makes it all about me and the order of service, we are doomed for destruction. God told me years ago, my God, keep the church, which is what it's supposed to be, about the people. Encounters is about you. It ain't about me, it's about you. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, I know that it's painful and I know that it's uncomfortable, but the foundation of your life, not just the church, your life is being healed. There's a whole lot of cracks in the foundation of our lives. That in order for God to do what he desired to do in all of our lives, the foundation has to be fixed. That's why it's dangerous to come in and out of the presence of the Lord and not deal with your stuff. Because as we say over here, and I'm flowing in the Holy Ghost, who in my life has to suffer because I refuse to change? Let me go a little deeper with that. Because I refuse to come face to face with my issues. Because I'm good at presenting one thing on Sundays, but I know I ain't living that on Mondays. Come on, somebody. Who in my life got to suffer, my God? Because I think, my God, that I don't have to strive for holiness. Because I think that I don't have to strive for sanctification. Who in my life got to suffer because I have a form of godliness with no power? So I want to ask some of you women that's excited about the recharge. And all of the things, my God, that you have laid per se to death. I know each one of you ladies, I think it was 120, maybe 130, if not more, of women in her. How many of you women, by the showing of hands, know at least three women in your life that can use an encounter? Let me see your hands. So, as I teach over her, when you come get a word, you got to do something with a word. So each one of you, my God, raise your hand and say, you know at least three people, I'm with them, Pastor Ted, my God, at least three people, my God, that need what you had just experienced on yesterday. How are you going to take what you have experienced on yesterday and go out there and affect those three? That's the other extension of discipleship. Because a disciple, my God, would take and raise a disciple, train a disciple, teach a disciple to go out and raise other disciples. That's what Christ told the church to do. The Christ didn't say nothing about jumping and shouting, screaming and hollering. I understand all that, but after we do all that, who are you touching? Whose life has been affected because we're in the house of the Lord today? What are you going to do with the importation recharge? What are we going to do with all of the stuff that we learn from face to face? Power of forgiveness, my God. Uh, uh, power of the cross, my God. Sexual cleansing, my God. Uh, uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit. What are we going to do with it? Because I guarantee you, I didn't seen it since 2003. And a week later, we the disciples going to be there. Will everything that was pulled into you leak out over a period of time? Or do you got what it take, my God, to carry the anointing? Is your holes filled? Is your cracks fixed? So you can handle, my God, what has been deposited into you. If we go out and reach the three, they'll be sitting up top if you do your part.
Yes, it's painful. But it's necessary. You might be here. This afternoon. Man and woe man. Men, 16 and up, we're going to be having an encounter next Saturday as well. If the Lord delay, it's coming. And I know some of you men have already decided that you're good. That you're okay. Some of you have already voted that I don't want to deal with my stuff right now. Some of us has already convinced ourselves that I deal with it another time. I don't want to deal with it right now. I don't want to let go. It's my grandson on my son's football game, so I can't come. We have already given ourselves many excuses why we don't need to be here. Men are very good at that. I don't have time. You got over 80 hours of PTO, but you won't take it off for that. But I get you, I bet you if Lil Wayne came to town, you'll take off. The statements that I get to make because I love you. There are some things, my God, that has been said since you've been coming to this church that a traditional pastor that's governed by the people and not by the spirit won't say. But I will say. Because you don't pay me, God does. You don't own me, God does. I'm not intimidated by you, I'm intimidated by God because I respect the call that's on my life. And one thing that I know about Jesus, Pastor Tedrick, Jesus came, Pastor Ted, to see about the people. And as I've always said, I'm going to continue to say, Pastor Chris, I'm strategic in what I'm doing in the spirit. People want to be preached to, but they do not want to be pastored. Because pastoring require that I put my hands on you. Pastoring require that God interrupt your life. We don't want that. We don't want that. The church don't want to be pastored. We sick. And a lot of the formality in churches, and I'm not putting mine up and putting one down, don't give us an opportunity to deal with our sickness. That's That's what encounters do. But after you come and experience an encounter, now you got the God which you encountered. So there is some men that I'm looking at that I ain't used to seeing that's 16 years and up. It ain't no coincidence that you came to service today. Because God have need of thee. Somebody's soul. Key word. Soul. Soul. Is dependent on your decision about this weekend coming up. We got two people coming from Oklahoma City and around the city of Tulsa. So I'm not looking for just the amount of people. I'm looking for your heart to come and submit so that you can encounter God. So that God can fix all of our foundation. Because we got too many cracks in our foundation. We struggling with father wounds. We struggling with being left. As I teach in the men's meeting, some of us men, if not all of us, Tanya, is still looking out the window with our backpack packed or our overnight bag packed, waiting on our father to come get us. We're grown with kids, but we're still looking out the window. And I remember when I said that, men in the man's meeting began to cry and said that was me that you was talking about. I'm grown and I got my own son, but I'm still waiting on my father who told me he was coming, who never came. We got wounds. We need to forgive ourselves, men. We need to let go of the shame and the guilt. A lot of our pain is tied up in our belief system. That's why you hear me say, whoever get the mind, get the life. There's a lot of things that we tend to blame on the devil that's really have to do with us because it's in our belief system. 
and counters get to deal with the belief system. I pray and hope that some of the men that's 16 and up take the time to come spend some time with the Lord because I promise you as you know and I know that tomorrow is not promised. We living in an hour. That's very interesting in the church. And I know Pastor Helen came here this past Sunday and set the church on fire. But she dropped a whole lot of principles. And I encourage you to go to YouTube and listen to what the woman of God spoke in the atmosphere. And the people that stood in this pulpit and the churches that was birthed from this ministry. The Victory Christian Centers, the Rainbow Bible College, Dr. Apostle Fred Price and so forth. That's out there in California. Grace, the big church Grace. All the churches birthed on the second level of this church. And God would thank enough for me and my wife, a former junkie, a former gang banker, to thank, to bless a church six years old with a level of campus as this. You can't tell me that God don't have something. In store for you. You may be here and you don't know my Lord and Savior. I got a saying that God gave me, and I mean what I'm about to say. It's good on this side. The things that God has allowed me to do, April Jackson and Jakari Jackson, the quality of life that God has allowed me to be able to live coming from the life that I come out of is good, Shemaine on this side. There's no other life that I would rather live at 49 years old. There's nothing that I would rather do, baby Cole, than live for God. There's nothing else to go back to, Orlando. There's nothing that the world has to offer me that I have not already experienced. So it's good on this side. Even in the midst of all of the in-betweens, it's good on this side. I thank God that I submitted to the Holy Spirit because I didn't even want to get started on the message. Because time was already at hand. And so I'm also strategically teaching my pastors and ministers that minister the gospel that you got to be able to stand up on your feet just because you got an order of service and a sermon to put together, don't always allow God to interrupt your program and your sermon. And do you have enough time in with God where you can just talk and walk and still make everything revelatory? Because it ain't me, it's God. And everything that the Spirit of God has said, Dominique, is about the people. Because this pastor wants you healthy. The scars and pains, Adam, things all the way back in your childhood that God is after. Because what God has the potential to take you, key potential, because we determine if we're going to let God finish what he started in his life. The potential for where you're going. You have to be healthy so as you go up, there won't be no cracks in the foundation. may be here and you don't know my Lord and Savior you want to experience God you may have accepted Christ but you made him Savior but you didn't make him Lord Lord means I give up my rights mother and my allegiance is now to God not to the world and God but to God in the body he's Savior to a lot of people and those that sit up under me hear me make these statements quite often because I get to pastor you in a few minutes that I have. I don't want him to just be Savior to you. He needs to be Lord and then Savior to you. When he's just Savior, that's on the works. <laughs> uh, I said Savior means you just thank God for the works that he did on Calvary, uh, the crucifixion and so forth. My God. 
But when he come, my God, and become Lord, that means you accept him for who he is. Who is God to you today? Who is God to you today? Is he someone you talk to only when you need him? Is there someone, my God, my God, that you open up your Bible and try to get acquainted with only when it's beneficial on your time? Who is God to you? Because last time I checked AA, alcohol and I'm going to say your God could be an ashtray. He could be a pencil. He could be a notebook. He could be a car. So ask yourself, who is God really to me? Have I really, really, really accepted and made him Lord of my life? In my close, before I give this altar call, I want to say this right here because the Spirit of God is leading me to say it. There's no way that you and I, I and you, can come and submit our life to the Lordship, Pastor, of Christ and not understand that there's a cost that you and I have to pay. There's a cost, not works. A cost that you and I have to be willing to give up and understand that now when you make him Lord, your life don't belong to you no more. It belongs to God. So you don't get to live any kind of way. You don't get to do what you want to do. You don't get to smoke weed, go to club, whore around. You don't get to do all that when he's Lord of your life. Oh, I see. I, see, 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 that's I, I said when he's Lord of your life, you don't get to live any kind of way, my God. Your allegiance is to his Lordship. And so one of the things, my God, that, and I talked to Bishop about this, and he may be looking. One of the things that I'm fearful of, fearful of, is that there are thousands, Pastor Ted, that has come and repeated the sinner's prayer and think that they saved, and they're not. Because they came and repeated a prayer after a pastor, after a minister, after a leader, my God, but they never fully accepted his lordship. Who is God to you? What do God fit? He should be on top. And everything else should be up under him. If you're here this morning or this afternoon and you heard what the man of God has to say, I'm just trying to work mine out like you're trying to work yours out, baby. And you know that you might not have ever accepted Christ. And you don't want to, my God, miss heaven because you think that you're saved. But you are ready, my God, and my God, to move past your traditional sinner's prayer and move into Lordship. Because you want to know. Because when you make him Lord, capital L-O-R-D, and accept his finished works on Calvary, my God, then and only then are you really saved. Repeating the sinner's prayer don't make you saved, baby. Because when you really give your heart to Christ, lifestyle will begin to change that don't mean you become perfect that don't mean you stop doing everything overnight but sooner or later you fall in love with the things that matter to God oh you don't get to I know y'all don't like it but it's the Bible I'm sorry I did one shot with you some of y'all might not ever see again I want to know that you're ready to stand before God and hear a job well done my good and faithful servant this is not a time to be embarrassed. This is a time to be real. We are still, as my wife said, having an encounter. This is how we teach at an encounter. It ain't jumping, it ain't shouting, it ain't doing all this. It's about, Lord, am I ready? This is an encounter right now. An internal working God has need of thee. If you have never made him capital L O R D of your life and you want to know for sure and you're ready to come down and say Lord who am I I want to know I'm not walking up out of here down second guessing saying I should have could have would have I'm coming if that's you why don't you come anybody anybody that want to know for sure that they're going to stand before God and her job well done and you're ready to renounce your, our sinful ways and you're ready to let go of the lifestyle that we live that we know that God don't like my God come on if that's you why don't you come why don't you come why don't you come
this ain't all. If you're ready to give up your marijuana and you're ready to give up all this stuff, you didn't win lied and got your cord and you know you ain't nothing wrong with you, you ought to be down here. <laughs> Why can I say that? Because I'm free. And I care about you. There may be some that's struggling with the identity. Some of my men don't wait to Saturday because Saturday might not come. There's some things in your childhood that you need God to touch before you get to the encounter. Though you're grown, and some may even have kids. But there's some things going on on the inside that don't nobody know about but you. Even your girlfriend don't know. Won't you come this way? Won't you come this way? Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to ask you all. We're going to pray and then we're going to release you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody's standing on your feet. Amen. Those that are at the altar, please remain here. Amen. Everybody stand. Everybody. Father, as we leave this place today, but not from your presence, go with us today. <laughs> Even as we walk out this door, I pray that a ray of light, a ray of sunshine, a ray of healing go with us as we walk out these doors. It's in your powerful and awesome name we pray. It is in your name we pray and give glory now in Jesus' wonderful name. Well, grab somebody as you leave and give them a wonderful hug and great brace of the Lord. Right now, it's in the name we pray. You're dismissed. Hallelujah. Those that are at the altar begin to continue to worship the King.